Good afternoon. Let's see if you are all awake. God is good all the time. And all the time. Could you please turn to your neighbor and greet them and say, you are blessed today. Turn to your neighbor, please. Turn to your neighbor. Very good. My dear brothers and sisters, few as we are, yet faithful. And today, you and I are blessed because we find ourselves on the last day of Christmas with this Feast of the Epiphany. And if we reflect in our readings, and especially these last couple of weeks, we realize that there are beautiful things that have come about during this Christmas season. We've gathered with family and friends. Some of us have gone away on trips, whatever it may be, on excursion. And most of all, that we've gained another understanding of who we are, particularly because we are different this year than we were last year. We've experienced different things. Some of us have experienced infirmities. Other of us have experienced healing. Other have gone away already for school, for different experiences. We are different today than we were yesterday. We are different this year than we were last year. And so, for our point of meditation this afternoon, I'd like us to meditate on three points as we finalize this season of Christmas. And it is that you and I are needy, that you and I have been found, and that you and I are invited. The first point, you and I are needy. In our life as Catholic Christians and in the story of salvation, there were only two people in salvation history who were not needy, and that was Adam and Eve. They had everything in the garden. They had everything in paradise. But when they took their eyes off of God, and they wanted to be God themselves, and they ate of the fruit, they lost everything. To the very point that they realized that they were naked. And so, God says, who told you that you were naked? And they answered, the serpent told us. The woman made me do it, says Adam. We are needy. And there are some needs that are not physical. There are some needs that are spiritual, emotional, and psychological. The need to be acknowledged. The need for power. The need to control. Look in your own lives, and especially as we particularly begin a new year, and we realize that there are still needs that are unmet. I don't care if you are married, you are consecrated, and you are ordained. There are still fundamental needs in us that are still depriving us of paradise, of fullness. Second, you and I have been found. You and I are constantly being found. An experience in my life has been when I go and visit my godchildren, I immediately as I open the door, as they, I come into the house, they all come up to me and they say, Ninong, can we play hide-and-go-seek? They're all small. And I said, sure, let's go play hide-and-go-seek. And so their dad counts from 1 to 20. And so I, we run. And we try to look for a place to hide. And we end up in one of the closet in their mom and dad's room. And inside that closet, there is a big blanket that is on the floor. And so we not only open the door, we not only hide in the closet, but we hide underneath the blanket. And I turn on my phone, my, the flashlight on my phone, and I tell them, shh, don't say anything. Don't be loud because your dad might find us. And so they laugh. <laughs> and then one of them will fart out of excitement. One of them will sneeze out of excitement. And then they'll quiet down and shh. And then slowly you'll hear the pitter-patter of their dad. And I tell them, shh. And he immediately opens the door and they lose it. They yell, they scream, and, they t and their dad says, I found you, I found you. So after the commotion is done, 
they tell me, Ninong, can we play again? And I said, sure. So the dad continues to count, goes and continue, counts 1 to 20. And I said, we have to find another place to hide. And they said, no, we can just hide in the closet again. It dawned on me. The only thing that they wanted to do was to be found by their dad. They didn't care where they hid. If they hid again in the closet, they don't mind. They wanted to just be found. This Christmas season, God finds humanity ready and he sends his son, born of a woman, born under the law. God sends his son and his son makes his dwelling among us. And he came to his own and his own did not recognize him. He was the light in the midst of the darkness. Those are all the descriptions from John chapter 1. And he made his dwelling among us. The Feast of the Epiphany is not God coming down, becoming a child. The Feast of the Epiphany is humanity coming to God now. You see, at Christmas, in, particularly in the Gospel of St. Luke, God comes and he is surrounded by the shepherds because the shepherds were the ones near them. In this case, on the Feast of the Epiphany, these three wise men, these magi from the east, came far and wide, and they were looking for God. Humanity comes, and they find Him. You and I have been found. Every single time you are reconciled in reconciliation in the confessional, you are found, and you are embraced by the Father in His embrace, in mercy and in justice. Every single Sunday that you come to Eucharist and to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, you are found. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but you've been found. And today, as you come for healing, the Lord Jesus will pass by in his Eucharist and he will seek you out. If there is an infirmity, if there is an emotion, if there is a stumbling block, he finds you ready. And third, you and I are invited. After we've gone through the whole Christmas season, we have good news. We have good news to share. This is what we call in church language evangelization. And you will say to me, and some will even say, and it's a word used all throughout. We evangelize, director of evangelization, evangelization, this. But you know what it is? People will say, well, I don't want to evangelize because I don't want to force myself on others. Bullpucky! That is not what evangelization is. Evangelization is just witnessing by your very life who God is. And you know who God is. Because he's moving in your heart and in your life. You know what it is when you pray and your life seems a little bit lighter. You know what it means when you come to Mass, that your week is bearable. That's all of the stuff. Those are all of the things that we need to share, to evangelize, to share good news. That we have a God who has found you. We have a God who is searching for you. A part of evangelization is doing the day-to-day -day things and knowing in, in, with purpose and desire that others are watching us. You know, when I go to restaurants, I always appreciate when I see a family or people who actually pray before meals and that they actually make the sign of the cross in public. And I say to myself, well, I'm not the only Catholic here. That's evangelization. That's changing a culture even without us knowing it. Right? It's, ex it's exactly the same way whenever we drive and pass a church to make just a simple sign of the cross. Or if we're in Quiapo and you have the black Nazarene, whenever they pass Quiapo, they raise their hands in salute to Apo Nazareno. Right? You know, little...
is the world. And it evangelizes not only the world, but your own home and family. I bet you there are people in your lives right now who do not go to Mass, who do not participate in the sacraments, and who are far away from God. That is children, grandchildren, cousins, aunts, uncles, whatever it may be. That's the first people that are watching us and looking at us and saying, are you actually living your faith? That's the evangelization that we need. And as time goes on, we're living a culture of death. You see, in, in the olden days when the apostles were, were preaching, okay, it was a fertile ground because people were ready to receive good news. Now, people have heard the truth and good news, and they deny it. Point blank, they deny it. It is apostasy that we are, that we are living now. It is blatant apostasy that they deny the truth. And that's the culture of death. That's why we constantly have to justify ourselves. We constantly have to be political. We constantly have to be politically correct. Because it's an age. It's a culture of death. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, you and I today have been found. You and I realize our need. And the Lord satisfies that need. And you and I are invited in this new year to invite others. Your homework today, after this Mass, is to invite one person to Mass at some point during the year and bring them and tell them, I found you and I need you to come with me. Can you do that for me? Yes, Father. Very good. And so, how blessed you are and how blessed I am on this day. Because God is good. And all the time. Uy, tulog na kayo.